So far, we have talked about a very important type of reactions that alkyl halides undergo, and that was substitution. And we talked about the two mechanisms that substitu substitution can be, SN2 and SN1, and we talked about the, the um, uh, reaction parameters, the uh, players, if you like, in these types of, of mechanisms, uh, such as the nucleophile, substrate, the leaving group, and uh, finally the solvent. In this lecture, we will learn about the second type of reactions that alkyl halides undergo, and that is elimination. And if you remember the introduction, uh, uh, to the, in the, when we talked, what we talked about in the, in the introduction to uh, the reactions of alkyl halides, that alkyl halides undergo two types of reactions, substitution and elimination. So sub, we cover substitution, this time we talked about elimination. This is the general structure of uh, an alkyl halide or a substrate in general that has a, a leaving group that has a leaving group. L could be X, by the way. Now, we, we, L is more general, or a more general representation of a leaving group, because then uh, tosylase as, as excellent leaving groups can now be included. And if you remember tosylase, uh, that's, a, that's a, a type of, uh, uh, or an excellent type of leaving groups in substitution reactions, and in reactions in general in organic chemistry. So this is a, a general structure of a substrate or an alkyl halide, if L is X, alkyl halides undergo elimination reactions if they are treated with a base, if you remember. And that's the difference between elimination and substitution. If the alkyl halide is treated with a base, the, uh, the reaction is elimination. If the alkyl halide is treated with a nucleophile, the, re the reaction is substitution. Yeah. So this time we talk about Elimination when the uh, alkyl halide or the substrate with the leaving group reacts with a, with a base. So this is the reaction in general between a substrate and a base. This is the elimination reaction again. And as you can see, the product is an alkene. Yeah, the product is an alkene. And if you recall, the, uh, the preparation of alkenes, yeah, when we talked about alkenes before, that one way to make alkenes is by dehydrohalogenation of, of alkyl halides, if alkyl halides are treated with a base. Yeah. That, that reaction is basically here. Yeah. That reaction is basically elimination, an example of, of this type of, of, the, of reactions. Yeah. So, so what makes elimination different from substitution is that the base, a base is used in this case, and the base, yeah, the base is, again, as you remember, a base has an affinity, by definition, has an affinity for a proton. This is very important, yeah? So a base is a substance, a substance with, a, with an affinity, with an affinity or substance that has an affinity for, for a proton. So it has an affinity for a proton. This is what makes a base different from a nucleophile. A nucleophile, by contrast, is a substance that has an affinity for carbon, as also discussed before. So this is the general scheme for the for the reaction. And we uh, we took this uh, uh, example before. I'm sure that if we take bromo cyclo uh, hexane, you treat it with potassium hydroxide, then cyclohexene is produced. Cyclohexene is produced. This is the alkyl bromide. This is a base of the uh, hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion uh, removes a proton from an adjacent carbon. Remember, the removal of hydrogen is always from, from, from an adjacent carbon. So this is the hydrogen, for example, here. So it could be this carbon, by the way, and of that carbon, so it's less loss of L and H or X and H, X from a, a, a specific carbon and H from a nearby or adjacent carbon. That's always the case. So formation of this general alkene structure results after loss of hydrogen from this right carbon here, from that carbon. And the same thing here. 
So a lot of formation of cyclohexene in this reaction uh, occurs by loss of edge from this carbon, you see, and we are, so this edge, the, one of these halogens here, it's lost and that's why the double bond is now between that carbon and carbon that had the, the, the BR. So this is a simple example of an elimination reaction and alkyl bromide with potassium hydroxide as a base. Let's now take another one. If we take uh, an alkyl bromide like this now. So this is uh, a tertiary alkyl bromide and it is not symmetrical. If this is treated with a with a base like potassium hydroxide, then elimination reaction should take place. But here we should stop for a second and think about this reaction. Now, we say it's loss of X from carbon and H from a nearby carbon, or loss of X from a carbon and H from an adjacent carbon. Yeah, so this BR then from this carbon, and then we look at adjacent carbon. Adjacent carbon, for example, we call it A. Carbon A has a hydrogen, so that hydrogen can be lost, and that BR, of course, can be lost, and if that's the case, then this product, this alkene product, is obtained a double bond between carbon A and carbon that has a BR. So this is the first product when A, when a hydrogen from carbon A is lost. But it, it, there isn't only carbon A as an adjacent carbon, there is carbon B. Carbon B here, carbon B has three hydrogens. Carbon B is also an adjacent carbon to the carbon that has the, the BR. One of these hydrogens can also be lost, and if that's the case, then we get a second alkene product, which is this one. So this is the second alkene product that is obtained by loss of a hydrogen from carbon from carbon B. What about uh, the uh, a third carbon? A third carbon would be carbon C. If you look at carbon C, this carbon C has two hydrogens, and these carbons, by the way, are all different from each other. This is an unsymmetrical alkyl here, yeah. Okay, so always we look for. Uh, uh, unequivalent hydrogens, if you like, on adjacent carbons. Yeah, the uh, the number of different types of adjacent carbons will give us the uh, the same number of different of different alkene products. So that's the second alkene. If one of the two hydrogens in on carbon C is lost with Br, then the double bond should be there. Yeah, so this should be then a third. This should be a third alkene product after loss of uh, a hydrogen from carbon C and BR. So there are three different products and you notice plus, plus, yeah, it's not all, all. This is a mixture of three products and therefore the first one plus, the second one plus, the, se the third one. This is a mixture of three, pro three alkene products that are obtained here, and three products are obtained because there are three different types of adjacent hydrogens, yeah? So this very important um, piece of information here in this regard, okay, in, this, in the discussion of elimination reactions, yeah? Okay, the other uh, point is that uh, alkenes, as we learned before, okay, are not, are not the same in stability, yeah? Okay, so although the three alkenes are produced, okay, they will not be produced in equal amounts. And the idea is that the more stable alkene or a more stable alkene will be produced in higher amount than less stable alkene. And if you look at these double bonds, you will notice that this double bond is tetra substituted. These, this, these two carbons, yeah of this carbon-carbon double bond are fully substituted. So this is a tetra. This is tetra substituted carbon-carbon uh, double bond. And if you look at this carbon-carbon double bond, you will see two groups here, two hydrogens here. So this is di 
substituted. This is a dye substituted carbon-carbon double bond. And this carbon-carbon double bond, you see this is the carbon-carbon double bond, has one group here and two groups there. So this is tri-substituted, uh, uh, tri-substituted carbon-carbon uh, double bond. So the, the, uh, there are three different types uh, of alkenes that are produced. So they're different also uh, in substitution with respect to the groups on the carbon-carbon double bond. There's a tetrasubstituted alkene, a disubstituted alkene, and a trisubstituted alkene. Uh, there is a chemist or a scientist named Zaid Zaf. Zaid Zaf uh, uh, developed uh, a rule that says uh, in elimination reactions of alkyl halides or in elimination reactions to produce alkenes, alkenes that are more stable predominate. Alkenes that are more stable predominate, which means they are produced in major amounts or higher amounts. So therefore, the, uh, the most stable alkene following ZZF's rule will be produced in major amount or it will predominate. So therefore, this tetrasubstituted alkene will be the major, the major, the major product followed by the trisubstituted alkene, and the disubstituted alkene is considered then the minor. So the main, so like you like, this is major one. You can take four like that. Major one. This would be produced in the highest amount. So this will have the highest, the highest amount. And the minor one will have the least amount, okay? And we can call the tri-substituted one as the second major, okay, the second major alkene because it's less instability than the tetra-substituted carbon, carbon double bond. Remember this is again called ZZF's rule. ZZF, ZZF's rule says, or ZZF says that um, more stable, more stable alkenes predominate, predominate, which means they are produced in major amount. So to conclude here, uh, to conclude this in introductory session, to elimination reactions, alkyl halides undergo a second type of elimination of, of reactions that is called elimination, and that's when the alkyl halide is treated, treated with a base. Uh, it is possible to obtain more than one alkene if the alkyl halide is not symmetrical.